D, wait for it. Wait for it. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds? And welcome to my Week in Review, where I come to you every Sunday with three entertainment stories that I personally find interesting, and then we discuss them down below. Now, also down below, you can find the articles that I read to bring you this video, and you can read them, you know, and come up with your own opinion, or just listen to this video where I break them all down for you, and then you just go about your way, and I'll try to do it as quickly as, as possible. Um, but before I get started, I just want to say that if you like what I do here and you enjoy independent content here on YouTube, please consider subscribing to my channel. YouTube is always changing up their algorithm and small channels like mine, we always get shoved to the back of the line. So I please ask that you like, share, and subscribe, and I thank you in advance. So why don't we go ahead and get started on these stories. So for my first story this week, it looked so it started out with a uh, on Twitter with a scoop from uh, my time to shine. Hello. And he put up this tweet where it said Amelia Clark is playing Varonk. Um, and he's talking about the new Invasion show. And it was later then confirmed by YouTuber Grace Randolph that Amelia Clark is playing Varonk. So uh, in the MCU, she is Talos's daughter, um, and you may remember her from Captain Marvel, and uh, and then um, we, but we never knew her name in that movie. Um, but uh, it was like we always uh, kind of knew maybe that she would be um, become the Squirrel Queen, um, and I'll talk about that just a tiny bit more later on, but. <clears throat> So who is she in the comic books? Now, Varonk is the queen of the Skrull uh, empire. She becomes the queen of the Skrull, um, who uh, served as the primary villain in of the 2008 crossover uh, uh, secret invasion. Now, if you read that comic book, okay, so Varonk, basically she was like thrown on a, well, it's not basically, she was thrown on a prison planet by the emperor at that time. I'm going to pull all these out and read it before that show comes out. And then she, you know, became, you know, kind of like religious or whatever. And she became the scroll queen. Um, she then led the secret invasion and everything. And um, yeah, so we'll talk about that in just two seconds. And a lot of people uh, thought she would be uh, Abigail Brand in this show. Now, I personally don't like uh, Abigail Brand, the character in the comic books, so I'm glad that they didn't make her that character, but if they had, I'd be fine with it because it's like, whatever. Now, she did pretend to be uh, Jessica Drew, and then when it was revealed that she was the Skrull Queen, you're all like, what? And that's, I think... Um, I think that that's one of the uh, the best parts about the secret invasion is it's like a, a who's who, uh, and you know, and when it's revealed, and I won't reveal any of them to you. Um, but I'm have to tell you right now that was just one of that's right one of my favorite series in the mar in all of Marvel all of Marvel the Infinity Gauntlet series is my favorite by far, but it, the invasion uh, Secret Invasion was so good like it, when when I oh there's one character I remember when it was revealed that they were uh, a scrawl I was like shut your face I was like oh my gosh this is so good I don't know how they're gonna do it. Like, uh, it sounds like this show, uh, which I'll talk about just a little bit more later, but it sounds like this show isn't going to be like a big uh, who's who kind of game, like a where's Waldo, but of a who's a scrawl, where's the scrawl. It sounds like it's just going to be like a father, daughter, or like a Nick Fury and Talos uh, series, but with like Talos's daughter thrown in the mix and everything. So it'll be interesting seeing where they go through now. In the comic books, it was that the scroll they wanted to take over the earth or whatever to and uh, to do that they they poised themselves they positioned themselves at, by shape shifting into important people and as superheroes and then when you go through the issues um, there you try to figure like I said before you try to figure out who's who who's a scroll and who's a you know not a scroll um, and they did this. And what I thought was a very smart way, I'm kind of giving one away, but it's not like a huge reveal as far as, uh, you know, a who's who, but in the comic book. So they go and I'm going to use Electra uh, because that's how they find out that. Uh, they, so they they dig up Electra's body. Now if, you read, now, if you ever read the comic books or if you saw the movie, Electra is killed with her own sigh by Bullseye in the comic books. And then if you ever know in comic books, when a character dies, they never really die. They just die, but then they come back, you know, later on. So in uh, the comic books, the way they explain this through the secret invasion was when Electra gets killed with her own sigh, um, it wasn't Electra that died. It was a scrawl. The scroll died and then it shape shapeshifted back into a scroll 
after uh, uh, the Skrull Electra had died. And they buried Electra and then shapeshift back into a Skrull. And I was like, that is so clever. That is so clever uh, and everything. I can't remember the writer of it, but that's such a clever way of doing things. And then um, they would keep the real superheroes. I'm kind of giving a little tiny bit away. They, they would keep the real superheroes up in uh, space in like a, a, a spaceship or a space uh, um uh, station. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm trying to remember all of it. I got to pull that crap out. And they would just keep them uh, cryogenically frozen. So all the real superheroes are up in space, you know, cryogenically frozen while the the uh, Skrull superheroes are here on Earth pretending to be them. It was it was really it was so good and interesting. I just really uh, I really enjoyed it. And you will, too, if you ever get a chance to read. I suggest go and reading it. It's really good. But in the movie, it sounds like Varank will be leading a small section or a faction of Skrulls that want to be that maybe want to take over the earth. This is just my thoughts because it's just because it, we got introduced to the Skrulls and they're more like refugees trying to run from the Kree Empire, trying to just, you know, fight as best they can because they're overpowered and they're over, you know, weaponed and everything. And they're just trying to find, and then we saw them, you know, in, on earth trying to get, you know, the other scrolls so they can get away and start another scroll civilization. So I'm thinking it sounds like this just sounds like they're just a small kind of terrorist organization that maybe want to get back at the Kree for what they did to them and they just kind of start here on earth maybe set up something here or maybe you know i'm not quite sure what they're going to do but that's what it sounds like to me now i think this all sounds fascinating but like i said before from what i got from uh the youtuber grace randolph was that it's going to be a smaller show it's not going to be big in scope it's just going to kind of set stuff up which i kind of go that's a bummer um you know i don't need i don't need a six episode sorry i need to have my lips are very chapped um, I don't need a six or eight, I think this is six episode, a six episode uh, TV show for you to set up an, a secret invasion movie. So I think that I'm not quite, I'll watch it even though I have not liked the series, the Marvel series up to this point. I mean, oh, I did like Hawkeye. I take that back. I did like Hawkeye, but all the rest of them, I didn't like them. So I don't know how this, this show will turn out. It sounds like a big dud to me, the show, but the movie might be good. Cause if in the show, if they don't reveal any superheroes as sprawl, then what's the point? You know, um, I just think that that would be, you know, they got, they should at least do one, like a, like an end reveal, like last episode, a big reveal. Like you're like, shut up and kind of thing, because I just, um, yeah, I just don't know how that's going to work out. So that is my first story of the day. So for my second story of the day, looks like Joseph Gordon-Levitt will be playing Johnny Carson in a new series. Now, this is going to be a biopic series about Johnny Carson. Um, I didn't, I don't think it said where it's going, but if it did, I didn't write it down in my notes and I apologize for that. Um, but it's being written by Deadwood creator David uh, Millich. Um, and it's going to be directed by Jay Roach. Now, um, uh, I never watched Deadwood. My brother swears by, he says it's so good. I always meant to watch it, but, you know, there's so much TV that it's hard to go back and watch all this stuff. But, uh, you know, I always did want to watch it. I just, you know, you know how it is. It's so hard to find time to, to, to kind of eke out of your life, to watch a new a TV show that's got so many seasons. Uh, but uh, but I, everybody I talk to says that Deadwood is good. So I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go with that. It's good. <laughs> I haven't heard a bad thing yet, um, but it's going to be titled King of Late Night. And uh, it's, it's going to be about Johnny Carson, like I said, uh, who I'll talk about in just a second, or I'll talk about the, the, the thing, but Johnny Carson. So he started his career at a local radio and television uh, in local radio and television uh, before uh, transitioning um, into network game shows and then landing the NBC's The Late Night Show. Um, which he hosted for 30 years. He hosted from 1962 to 1992. Um, and he was famous for his nightly on-screen presence. Uh, Carson was very private off-screen, uh, shunning the social circuit for a personal life that included four marriages. And some stuff has come out about him 
uh, lately uh, within the past, like we'll say five, 10 to five years or whatever uh, about how he was just not a nice person. Like, I guess he was very mean. Uh, Like, I guess, you know, to not only his uh, crew and staff, but I guess to his wives, I guess he did a little hitting. Um, Well, you know, Uh, now none of this, I'm just allegedly, allegedly, uh, because I don't know, I wasn't there. I don't know, and uh, he's not around to defend himself. But apparently, he was just not a nice person, and he went through four marriages. That's so many. I'm, I, I listen. No judgment on anybody, but uh, I, I've only been married once. I might get married twice, but but after the second time, don't you just go? Maybe this isn't for you. Maybe marriage isn't for you. You know, it just uh, you know because <laughs> you, you you if you gone if you gone through four people, maybe you're the problem. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, I went on a little tangent there. Now. You may know Joseph Gordon Levitt because he was in um, he was in Inception. Uh, he was also in The Dark Knight Rises, which I wish they would have gone on a little bit further with that. I would have liked to have seen him take it on the mantle of Batman or Nightwing uh, or whatever he became. And then he was also in Don John, which he wrote and directed and, and starred in, which I actually like that movie, that Don John movie. I thought it was very well done. Uh, but, you know, it didn't get very much, uh, you know, like attention, or at least I don't think it did. I, I don't know anybody. Every time I mention that, excuse me, every time I mention that movie, everybody's like, what? And everything. So, um, so, okay. So the series will follow the life and career of late night TV pioneer, Johnny Carson from New York to Los Angeles to the Las Vegas strip King of night. Uh, the King of the night will reveal how Johnny's diehard connection to his audience overlapped with his lifelong desire to be a basic to be for a basic quality of life and how his beloved on-screen persona came into conflict with the more colorful aspects of his personal life. Now, I have to be honest with you. I think this sounds fascinating. I love Johnny Carson. And this was before I found out that he, you know, may have been a wife beater and he wasn't nice to his kids even. Um, but I I always love Johnny Carson and I love the late night show. He, he just was so great. Um, and I think Joseph Gordon-Levin, he kind of looks like Johnny Carson a little bit. So I think that this sounds interesting. And I am I personally am interested in this story just because, like I said, I do like Johnny Carson and the late night show with Johnny Carson. So I think that for someone like me who is a fan, this sounds interesting and sounds like a good idea. But for someone that's not a fan and may not know Johnny Carson as, my, as well as I do, may not be interested in it. But I think that this does sound uh, very good to me, to me. It sounds very good. So that is my second story of the week. So for my third and final story of the week, Gemma Chan and producer Nina Yang Bun Jivoi, sorry, are teaming up with working title films to develop a biopic of Anna Mae Wong. Now, who is Anna Mae Wong? She is a golden age icon and Hollywood's first Chinese American movie star. Now you may know, uh, you, may, you may not know her, but she was in movies such as The Toll of the Sea, uh, Daughter of uh, Shanghai, and Island of Lost Men. Now I have not seen any of these movies, but I do remember Anna uh, Mae Wong. I don't think I've seen any of the movies that she's been in. Um, but, uh, you know, I do, I do like when I saw her, um, when I did see her, uh, uh, picture. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know who that is. I've, I've seen her before and everything. Now, she didn't do too well in uh, Hollywood back in back in the day um, because, you know, she was Asian and Asians didn't get a lot of love back then. Uh, you know, uh, I they probably get the least amount of love, in my opinion, today. Uh, but, uh, you know, she she was, you know, she was in some movies, but then she had to go abroad. She had to go to Europe and uh, be on theater, uh, be on the stage, and she had to go to Asia and, you know, and star in those kinds of movies uh for them and stuff because she you know the audience here wasn't they were a little backwards thinking you know um i mean they 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 famously in hollywood back in the, then uh put uh white people as asians and they would just uh mess with their eyes with makeup or with some kind of like prosthetic it was a very uh not good um it was it was very racist, uh, but you know, and and it it just sucks. It sucks. Um, but I'm glad that even though she's no longer with us, God rest her soul. Uh, at least she's getting some attention now, and she's getting that through Gemma Chan and Nina Yang, uh, Bon Giovi, 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 Bon Giovi. 
Uh, I hope I said that right. Anyways, so who is Gemma Chan? You may not know Gemma Chan. If you don't, I don't know where you've been, but she was most recently in the Eternals movie. Uh, she played um, Cersei in that one. Um, I didn't like that movie. I thought it sucked balls, but I do love Gemma Chan. Um, I'll talk about it. She's also in Crazy Rich Asians and my favorite character in that movie. So, I mean, that should say something. Then I personally found her through the TV show Humans, which only had two seasons, I think. I'm like 99% sure it only had two seasons, um, which I fell in love with her in that show. I, I immediately, as soon as she was on that show uh, I, and I saw her, I was just like, this woman... Uh, I hope she goes places because I loved her there. I love her now. She's not only is she hot, she's just got, I think, um, just an elegance about her that I think that really just hops off the, the whatever you're seeing her in a magazine or on screen. Um, you know, I think and she's so like I said, she's so elegant. And I think that she just really I, I think she just kind of pops when she's, uh, you know, wherever she's at. Now, uh, Michelle uh Krusik, Krusik, I I don't know how to say her last name, recently portrayed Wong in Ryan Murphy's Hollywood for Netflix. Now, I don't know if you've seen that show. Personally, I thought it sucked. I was not, uh, I did not enjoy that show. I thought it wasted a bunch of my time. Um, and I have I have doubts about Ryan Murphy, but you know, but that's besides the point. Okay. So moving on in a statement, Chan said anime Wong was a trailblazer, an icon and a woman ahead of her time, her talent and her exploration of her art, both in and outside of the U S was groundbreaking and the challenges and prejudice she faced in the early 20th century as an actress speak directly to the uh, conservation's of the uh, and the world we are navigating today and i think that that's true i you know like i said before she did have to deal with that stuff and hollywood back then was you know notorious for taking uh asian and black characters and uh you know uh, and and Hispanic characters and, and casting white people and then just changing their skin color or in the case of Asians, their eyes. Um, I'm trying to remember that woman's name where they just they just put makeup on and, to make her look Asian and, uh, and just and it was it's just bad. It's just bad, you know, but what are you going to do? You, you can't change the past. You can only fix it in the future. So anyways. Uh, David Henry uh, Huang is writing this, and he is the first uh, uh, Asian American to win a Tony. I found out uh, while reading this article, I was like, good for him, good for him. And uh, like I said before, Nina Yang uh, Bongi, Bongiovo, Bongiovi, Bongiovi, Bongiovi is uh, producing along with our executive producing and um, producing along with Gemma Chan. And I didn't see that there was a director attached to it at this time of recording. It could be now that there is a director, but at the time of recording this, there wasn't a director attached. So it'll be interesting to see who they get. There's a lot of Asian talent here. So I'm gonna, I'm just going to say they're probably going to pick an Asian director, which uh, I'm for. I think that I'm for representation. I hope they hire a good, oh God, what was the name of the guy that directed uh uh, uh, what is his name? I can't, he's directing the Wicked movie. I have no faith in him. So I hope they don't get him. <laughs> um, but I, again, I think this sounds, I think this sounds great. I would watch this. I'll watch anything Gemma Chan is in. So, and I think that she's smart enough to where she picks projects that I think that uh, she knows what she's doing. And this sounds fascinating to me. I, I love old school Hollywood. So it'll be interesting to see through that perspective, what it was like back then, even though these people weren't alive back then, but just to see what what kind of stuff uh, 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 Miss Wong went through. All right, you guys, those are my three stories for this week. Tell me, what do you guys think about this? How do you feel about Amelia, Amelia Clark um, playing Veronk in the new uh, Secret Invasion show? Um, are you cool with this? Did you guess she was a, a, a Veronk or, or are you one of those people that thought she was playing Abigail Brand? Um, you know, uh, did, you, did you read Invasion, uh, Secret Invasion, the comic book? And what did you think about it? It's so good. If you haven't read it, I cannot stress to you how much it's so good. I suggest going and buying it on line if you can go to a comic book shop if they have it buy it there please support your local comic book shops um if you are not a comic book reader i promise you will like this story i promise you you will it's so good the mystery of it it's so good the mystery of it all and then finding out who's a scrawl and then there's there's one character 
well, there's a handful of characters, but there's one for me personally that when it was revealed, I was like, shut your face. I was like, oh my goodness. I did not see that coming. I just hit my mic. And I, uh, I was just like, oh, that's so good. So good. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to read the, to finish it and everything. And then it leads on to other pretty interesting things in the comic book uh, world, but I don't know if they'll do that on the, the TV shows and movies. Um, okay, and then so what tell me, what do you guys think about uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt playing Johnny Carson in this new series, this biopic series? Um, you know, is this something that you're interested in? Is Johnny Carson somebody that you liked, uh, you know, uh, as a, a host and everything? Um, you know, and do you like Joseph Gordon Levitt? Did you see his movie Don John? Uh, you know, uh, you know, what do you guys think about this and everything? Do you like late night television, uh, you know, and all that stuff? And do you find it that kind of stuff fascinating? And then finally, how do you feel about Gemma Chan playing Anna Mae Wong in this biopic movie uh, for working title films? You know, is this something that you're interested in? Is, you know, Anna Mae Wong someone that you knew about, that you're interested in, that you want to know more about, that you find her story and her lived experience interesting? Or is this something you're just like, mm, I'm not interested. I just don't care. Uh, you know, I mean, I, for me personally, I think it sounds very interesting. And I'm, and like I said before, Gemma Chan, I'll watch anything that woman is in. She is fantastic all the way around so you guys tell me what you guys go uh think go ahead and leave all your guys comments in that section down below if you like this video go and hit that like button you know i won't mind if you new my channel please hit that subscribe button i'd greatly appreciate it and we'll see you guys next week on my weekend review you guys have a good week bye hey nerds if you like this video go ahead and click that Geek what icon and subscribe and if you like this video go ahead and join me every sunday with my weekend review